The ringing of my doorbell was a welcome change to the quiet monotony of being alone at home. I hopped off the sofa and pulled the door open, smiling at the sight of my sister, Sarah, and her husband, Dave. Hey, May, can we come in? Sarah asked. Her black hair was tied up in a ponytail, something she had picked up while in college. Across the right side of her face was a red splotch, a scar from getting scolded by hot oil while cooking a few years ago. She hadn't gone anywhere near a lit stove ever since, which was a shame. She was a true culinary genius. David was carrying a handful of paper bags, giving me a smile through his braces. He had pristine brown hair that he clearly took a lot of care for, and he had that same anxious look in his eyes as always. I led them in, sitting them down at the sofa and passing them some freshly brewed cups of tea. My parents had gone on a long vacation, so I was the only one at home for a while. Sarah and David had their own apartment not too far away and had come by for a quick visit. We chatted for hours about their futures and mine. No way. You got the job? I blinked in surprise. No, they were impressed with me. Greenvale Middle School's new math teacher right here. Sarah laughed. David gave us a nervous smile. Sarah told me about all his worries and about her stress and all that. It was cute, but Sarah seemed to find it a bit patronising. Our lovely talk was interrupted when Sarah leapt up from her seat, staring at the window. Oh. My. God. Look! She scrambled to the door, nearly tripping over my legs in the process. David and I followed quickly, tailing her out of the front door to find her gently petting an adorable orange tabby cat sitting on my mailbox. It was Finn, starving even, and I could see Sarah cooing but frowning at the cat's clear malnourishment. Oh, aren't you the cutest cat? Aren't you the best? Look at how friendly he is, May. Yeah, when you were in college, everyone here had a cat craze. They were buying them from pet stores like candy, I explained standing several metres away to avoid triggering my allergies. And then, once they realised the responsibility needed, they abandoned them. There's a real stray problem around here. Not enough food, either. That's why this one is so sociable. No! How cruel. I won't stand for this adorable little fella to be starving here. We'll adopt him. What do you think, David? She stood straight up putting her hands on her hips. Sarah, we still have your student loans, my student loans, the rent, the loan for the rent, the loan for the wedding, David listed off. I've decided to name him Timmy. I'm fine with whatever you do, just don't bring him into my house. You know I have those allergies to cats, I said. Sarah, you can't even cook. How will you feed the cat? You don't need to cook store-bought cat food, Sarah and I said at the same time. David could only shake his head as Sarah gently coaxed Timmy into getting picked up. Even I thought he was worrying too much, probably imagining Sarah as some crazy cat lady in the next few months. Sarah herself was too excited about her new cat to stay, and she waved me a goodbye and quickly left with David. Unfortunately... I didn't know what I was in for. Sarah would text me literally every single day for the next few weeks, declaring Timmy the greatest cat of all time, or sending me five minute videos of Timmy just eating food. David shot me the occasional text, asking how to pretend to be allergic to cats in the first few days, but it seemed he had resigned to his fate. A couple of weeks later, I had cycled over to their apartment to pick up some cakes they had bought for me. Slapping on my allergy mask, I gave their door a few knocks. David pulled the door open, flashing me a welcoming smile before walking back to his armchair. I was immediately struck by the aroma of frying fish wafting from the kitchen, and by three grey cats all sitting around David's chair, looking at me curiously. Huh, you've got multiple cats now. I followed the walls of the apartment to stay as far away from them as possible. I know. 
Aren't cats great? David remarked, bending over to pick one up. Ned hissed, swiping at his hand. He only chuckled. Raising an eyebrow at his strange turnaround on pets, I walked into the kitchen, then yelled in horror at the sight of Sarah standing at the stove, fish frying in a pan, as Timmy and two other cats sat around her. Hey, May! You're cooking! I exclaimed. I know. Timmy looked a bit bored of all the cat food, so now I cook for them. David and I have been so much closer with all the cats too. As she said this, David walked past me and gave her a peck on the lips, before grabbing the two small boxes of cakes and passing them to me. Feeling my nose already starting to get a bit itchy, I decided not to stick around to ask about the sudden turn, and made my leave after thanking the two of them for the cakes. I texted her that night about the change of heart David had about cats, and she did about cooking. This was the woman who hit someone with a baseball bat for carrying a frying pan too close to her. I know it's a big change, but the cats are really helping. I can come over tomorrow and explain to you. Her text read. I agreed and decided to wait for the answers. When I opened the door after hearing her knocking the next afternoon, I yelped at the sight of David and their six cats behind her. Can we come in? No cats allowed. I already said, leave them outside. Oh, May, come on, she pleaded, then yelped and retreated as I shot my allergen spray around them. Fine, fine. David, take them for a walk. I'll chat with May. Come back in an hour, Sarah told him. David grinned, clearly excited, and the cats followed him as he strolled off. Though Timmy needed some extra nudging from Sarah. Be careful. There's been a lot of traffic accidents in the area lately. I called out before shutting the door. Once inside, I forced Sarah to wash her hands at spray point before seating her down on the sofa again. Sarah told me all about how much better she was feeling with all the cats around her and how much greater her relationship with David was getting. David even went to ask his boss for a raise. No way. He's been trying to work up the courage for that for a couple of months, right? I laughed. It did seem like the cats were making them happier. I glanced at the clock to find that two hours had just breezed by. Weird. Shouldn't David have been back by now? We chatted on for a while more, and two hours turned into three, then four, and the moon was high in the sky, without David back yet. Sarah and I had finished our dinner a while ago, and she was getting quite anxious, pacing up and down the hall as I told her it would all be fine. Just then, she heard scratching from the front door. Rushing over, she yanked it open, and in came Timmy and his five cat friends. David was nowhere in sight. Timmy, you're okay. Ah, did you all have a good walk? What's all this stuff over your mouth? Do you want to say hi to May? She said as she wiped Timmy's mouth. Get out. Get out. I brandished the allergen spray again, and Sarah quickly shooed them out and stood by the doorway. I'll head home then. It was fun. We'll talk again, May. Sarah gave me a wave goodbye. Wait, what about David? Where is he? I asked, but... She closed the door without responding. Through the window, I could see her skipping to her car with the cats walking after her. Something seemed wrong here. My gut was telling me. I pulled out my phone and gave David a call, but nobody picked up. I had a bad feeling, but it seemed wrong to go call the cops over a hunch. Nah, if Sarah was that casual about it, surely she must know he's okay. I woke up the next day to knocking on my door and several missed calls. Quickly rushing down the stairs, I opened the door to find a police officer outside. Are you Miss May Jackson? Uh, Yeah, what's this for? It's about your brother and more, David Sterling. I'm afraid he's been found dead. 
the officer said. It felt like my heart had stopped for a second. Dead. But how? Oh my god. That was all I could mutter. We interviewed his wife, Sarah. She claims she was here the entire time. We'd just like to ask you a few questions. The cop interviewed me, and I answered the best I could remember. He told me that David was found near the western drop, having fallen down it to his death. His body was found half-eaten by wildlife, and it was estimated that he had died about the time we were starting to have dinner. Soon, the cop bid me farewell and left. Something was very wrong here. To reach the western drop, David would have had to walk through the woods in the evening for an entire hour, climb over several fences, and ignore the warning signs, all to plummet down the cliff to his death. It wasn't the David I knew, not the one who had anxiety going to the doctors on his own. David had changed since he and Sarah got Timmy. I hopped onto my computer, opening Google and typing cat owner behavior change into the search bar but I only found articles on cat behavior. Hmm, how about cat owner becoming braver? Nope, still nothing. Cat making you different? Nothing. Wait, no, hang on. What was this about a parasite? I searched the name and clicked on the Wikipedia page. Toxoplasma gondii has been shown to alter the behavior of infected rodents in ways that increase the rodents' chances on being preyed on by felids. As I read down the article, I could barely believe my eyes. The parasite lived on cats, could only reproduce on cats, but it spread to rodents and humans, being able to alter their brains if it infected them, changing their behavior, making them get into traffic accidents more, making them more daring with new businesses and jobs. I sat back in my chair, tugging at my hair. It couldn't be. The page stated the behavioural changes weren't that great, yet it all matched up. The parasite made people take more risks, become more outgoing and active, even made them find other infected people more attractive. It aligned too perfectly. If the parasite living on all the stray cats in the area had somehow gotten much more potent, then perhaps it could have caused David to take the risk of jumping off a sheer drop. That would mean Sarah could be at risk too. I sprinted out of the house, my heart pounding in my chest, alarm bells rang in my head. It was like I could sense Sarah was in danger. I got on my bike and pedaled as fast as I could towards her apartment. Intruding thoughts flooded into my mind. What if she was standing on the balcony right now, ready to jump? What if she was scolding herself to death? When I finally arrived at her door, I pounded on it with my fist. Sarah, open up, it's me, May. Sarah. I yelled into the door to no response. I went to jiggle the lock, but to my surprise, the knob turned in my hand. Unlocked. I gagged at the overpowering smell of cat urine coming from within. The lights were still on, but everything was a mess. The table legs and sofas were scratched to terrible degrees, and cat feces was all over the floor, with no one having bothered to clean it up. The stench was utterly revolting, but slapping on my allergy mask again, I moved in, searching every room. Sarah wasn't home, but... She had just been here. There was food still out on the table, and the windows were all open. I could see tufts of cat fur in every corner of the rooms, not having been swept up. I retreated from the house when I felt my nose get itchy once again, pulling out my phone to dial for Sarah. Sarah, where are you? Are you safe? I practically yelled into the phone when she picked up. Yeah, May. What's up? I'm near your house. There's that road near the woods. I'm just playing with my cats. They're so cute. She giggled. 
Stay there. I'm coming over. I tried to say more, but she hung up the phone after that. The next few minutes were a blur. I rushed downstairs, got on my bike and cycled faster than I ever had before. A part of me suddenly questioned if I had gotten infected by the parasite as well. I was going so fast down that road. No, no. This was just pure worry for my sister, I told myself. I had stayed far away from cats. It was a few streets down from my house that I found Sarah's car rammed against a tree, the engine smoking. Bits of metal from the bumper were strewn all over the grass. The driver's door was open, and there was no sign of Sarah. A terrified sensation gripped my heart, and I had to actively struggle to look away from the crash to keep cycling on, calling out for Sarah. I finally found her, not too far away. She was just beside a ditch that separated the road from the woods where David had been found dead. Nobody really lived around here, so it wasn't too impossible that no one had heard the crash. But more importantly, she was sitting on the road, at the bottom of a downhill slope. Timmy was in her hands, meowing loudly. The other cats just sat around her. Sarah! I called out. She turned around, giving me a warm smile on her blood-stained face. But she didn't move. Sarah, get out of the road! I yelled as loud as I could, cycling towards her. But I was still quite a distance away by the time a red truck came barreling over the top of the hill at full speed. It honked. It tried to break. Its wheels screeching on the asphalt. Sarah, get off the road! I screamed so loudly my throat went hoarse for the next few days, and I had to cough. Timmy leapt out of her hands, and the cat rushed to the side of the road to wait. Sarah ignored me. She turned to the truck. It seemed like she was laughing. I was just ten meters away from her when I squeezed my eyes shut. There was a sickening sound of bones being crushed to pieces, of tearing flesh. The air filled with the smell of blood. And then I heard the truck speed up again and drive off. There was silence. No, 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 no. I didn't dare to open my eyes. She was fine if I didn't open my eyes. I didn't have to look. Estimating my position, I turned my bike to cycle uphill before opening my eyes once I was sure I was facing away from her. My breathing was ragged and shaky, and I could feel tears starting to well up. Once I reached the top of the hill, I pulled my phone out and dialed for the police. It was then I heard something from the bottom of the hill, and I made the mistake of turning around to look at where she had sat, still alive and breathing just a minute ago. Dozens upon dozens of stray cats were trotting out of the woods and onto the road, where they began to feast on what remained of my sister. Hello listeners, if you enjoyed this story, please check out the author in the description. For more content, leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more sinister readings.